You are on the platform. I'm Sean Plunkett. It's that time. Um, it's that time of a Friday. And look, uh, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to announce a sponsor for Free Speech Fridays, and they're the perfect sponsor. Um, I will tell you more uh, in the in the days ahead. We're just finalising the deal. Really pleased with it. It is one of the most listened to parts of our show, and we look at all our social media figures, uh, the millions of people who consume our stuff every month, and Free Speech Friday is always up there in terms of stuff that you go back and listen to and you download and you like. And we got a great uh, panellist this morning. When I, when I rang, I think both of these people, I said, oh, I've been on with them before. And I said, yeah, and you, you both were really good together. So a uh, very warm welcome to Juliet Moses, who joins us again. Juliet, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Uh, good. And uh, Morris Williamson, Auckland Councillor. Morris, how are you, mate? I'm absolutely brilliant. Well, I think I'm brilliant. Uh, Most people don't. <laughs> 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 All right. Where do we look? Let's start where we. The last half hour, I've been talking to Bob McCroskey about this amazing kick for touch on the puberty blockers uh, transgender uh, issue. All around the world, reports are coming in. And there really does seem to have been a turning in the tide where people are now questioning the um, um, use of puberty blockers in, in treating gender dysphoria amongst uh, young people, amongst children. Uh, and the practice is being stopped, it would seem, a new country every week is saying, we're not going to prescribe these things anymore. The medical evidence... Um, just doesn't sustain what can be a completely life-altering um, treatment. Um, our government really doesn't like, the National Party in particular, doesn't want to get involved. Health yesterday decided they would delay making a decision on this. The Minister says he can't get, he can't have an opinion until the Ministry of Health tells him what the opinion is. The Ministry of Health delay that opinion and nothing happens. Um, that sounds to me like they're trying to avoid getting involved, Juliet. Well, I mean, they're going to have to get involved, aren't they? Uh, to me, it's, it's actually pretty simple. We are talking about probably some of our most vulnerable people in society, vulnerable children who are questioning their gender or, you know, confused in some way, and they deserve as much as anyone else, if not more so, to have evidence-based treatment. And if there are, as there clearly are, especially in light of the, the CAS report, serious questions over, uh, you know, the, the as you say, the, the long-term consequences of this, this treatment uh, and, and the sort of methodology around it and whether there is actually any evidence to support it at all, um, I think it needs to be looked at very urgently and a decision made. But the problem is, Morris, we've got a government that refuses to look, and it is clear and present danger to people. People are undergoing treatment right now. We have the highest use of, um, of puberty blockers of any comparable country. The well, highest prescription rate to children. I simply don't get it. This thing should just stop right now. The NHS has mm. said so, found all the evidence for it, bang, stop. And I tell you, I, I told you this once before, but I'll repeat it. While I was Consul General in LA, you couldn't go to a Los Angeles, especially Hollywood uh, or West Hollywood party without at least two sets of parents, maybe three, chatting about their children and their journey through the transgendering. But if you went to Slippery Creek in Idaho, they didn't even know what you're talking about. So I'm sorry, but a hell of a lot of this stuff is generated by uh, the, the sort of society and now it's so cool. It's the modern day dog in a handbag. And there's a big list published on Twitter this week of all the Hollywood celebrities, huge list of celebrities that have all got children that are either non-binary or transiting through transgender. And yet beside it, there was a list of all of the Bangladesh uh, farmers uh, whose children are, and that was a blank page. <laughs> Okay, I get you. Juliet, you so do... We've got to stop the yeah, nonsense. Yeah, well, I expect the government to do something or answer questions. Ducey's, mm. been, Ducey's been dodging on this for yeah. three to four weeks and he's yeah. getting away yeah. with it, Juliet. Mm-hmm. Well, he, he's I've got some sort of personal... I mean, I think his background is relevant, isn't it? Um, he worked at uh, Tavistock I, Clinic in Britain. 
Y- yes. Uh, so he may come at it from a particular perspective. I also think, you know, the, the PATHA is it's called the Professional Association for Transgender Health. Who are all role, transgender people, one way or another. Yeah, and, and their statement about the CAT report was appalling, I thought. Well, they're being ideological. treated by the Department of Health by De Fata yes, Ora exactly. as a special stakeholder group. Exactly. And, and I see, you know, being quoted quite a bit in the media. And I, I have to say that to, to the extent that I'm excluding you from here, uh, from this comment, obviously, but to the extent that the media has covered it and there's been a lot of non-coverage, silence about it, but yeah. to the extent that they've covered it, I think it's been a... a generally a very poor job that they've done on yep. it with the, with the occasional... Well, it'd be fair to say um, we have the story to ourselves, which is a good segue, I guess, Juliet. Well, 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 well right. I want to say something. Yeah. You can do some serious, irreversible damage to young kids yeah. by allowing all this nonsense, and it's time we actually put it to a complete halt, stopped it all, and only after there was really clear evidence that it was safe and long-term implications and so on. If a young kid feels they need to be on this, I've co- look, the number of phases kids and even young teenagers go through, I don't mind any of those phases if they're reversible and they make no change. But if they're irreversible, it is absolutely on. It is absolutely our responsibility to make sure this stuff is buddy stopped. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it, it is actually a huge... It, Huge scandal, in my view. Yeah. Um, I've said I think this is bigger than the unfortunate experiment at National Women's, Juliet. Yeah, and, and yep. I just, as I, I just, as I said at the start, we are talking about vulnerable children, um, and yep. we're talking about basic principles of science and informed consent here that everybody is entitled to. Yeah. Well, at the moment, to be honest, the platform's one of the few places that is covering uh, this issue. Uh, and there are a few other issues that only we cover, despite the fact that I'm constantly being told that democracy was under threat by the demise of News Hub. Um, some sort of lifeline from News Hub uh, with stuff saying it will contract to Warner Brothers Discovery to make a six o'clock news bulletin um, every night of the week and a half hour news bulletin on the weekends. I, I opined on Twitter if you were worried about bias and credibility and public perception issues in your news, getting stuff to take over from News Hub <laughs> is like getting a pedophile to babysit. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, shark in charge uh, of swimming pool. Yeah. Uh, I'll start with you, Morris. Morris, I, I don't know. This seems a weird decision. Why didn't they just clean up their own news operation? Or are they trying to dodge some redundancy payments or something? Sean, you know what any other business, whether it be at airlines or be it people who make soap powder or whatever, what they do is they say, our customers no longer want the product we're offering. We've got to have to make some changes to the product in order to entice customers back wanting to buy our product, etc., etc. And yet I see the news media somehow think, no, that's not the same for us. Uh, okay, people don't want to watch us and they're turning off in droves and we've got no customers, but somehow someone should intervene to make it still happen. There are some really simple things that a number of news media people could be doing to attract eyeballs mm. and ears, but it is, should not be in any form while oh, we need the government to... Oh, this idea of the government needs to be involved. Yeah, well, just, the nice thing sense. about this deal, Juliet, no government money involved so far. That's great, that's great. <laughs> Isn't it? But, Juliet, yeah. I listened to, to, to Sinead Boucher. I'm going to be... Mm-hmm. And I put this nicely in a non-misogynistic way. She was all <laughs> over the place like a mad woman's urine. <laughs> 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 we'll 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 leave aside you know the question of whether that's misogynist or not. Um, yeah, look, I mean, I was surprised to see her saying uh, that we're not getting into linear television because I that's I'm exactly what it is. when she said that. Yeah, um, and look, she's excited, she's enthusiastic, so good on her. But uh, there's a lot of commentary about the fact that uh, from people who know how to produce. TV news bulletins and what it takes, that she doesn't appear to know what's required or, or doesn't have the, you know, the in-house expertise to do that. Uh, it's a huge undertaking and I guess, look, good luck to them. But 
uh, there's a lot of scepticism about whether they can make it work. Yeah, and, and I mean, you're close to someone who knows this business intimately. They're going to mm-hmm. keep 40 of the 300 staff, presumably mm. multi-skill or multi-task existing staff journalists in the field. But I was even thinking, uh, Juliet, the culture of working in print journalism and ele- even electronic journalism are quite different. And I'll be yeah, honest, yeah, I think, yeah. st- I mean, I think Tim Murphy still thinks I'm an uppity prima donna because I was TV and he worked for the Herald and I was slightly more relaxed and enjoyed my work long more than the people who sat there on their typewriters having to get 750 or 1,000 words out. It, that's a really hard cultural fit to take the mm-hmm. telly people and the print people and get them happy with working with each other. Mm. And then it sounds like there'll be expectations that some who are just in print now will now, you know, like in the regions and stuff, will have to be doing TV as well. And yeah, yeah. So it's, and they'll it's all ask really for more money, or they should if they're multitasking, shouldn't they? Mm. 